Hello, welcome to the Monday, May 9th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. On Thursday, F5 announced a patch for a big IP for its load balancer appliances, affecting the iControl REST API. Exploitation does not require any authentication and leads to remote code execution, making this a big deal. Also, all versions, but the very latest ones are vulnerable. And to top it off, well, uh, exploits are already uh, being advertised as uh, being created, and at least one researcher noted that they will make their exploit public uh, later this week. But well, there's one way to mitigate this vulnerability and imagine that it's protecting access to the management interface or the self IP address. The other mitigation is to change the configuration of the device and essentially force all connections to be closed instead of using keep alive. Apparently the root cause here is some kind of request smuggling where you are adding a second request as sort of the body of a first request and confuse the device as to what request it's processing. Now, since not exposing the self IP and the management interface is sort of standard procedure for these devices, highly recommended, and also all the setup uh, features and such are guiding you towards that way. I don't think this will such be such a big deal. There are some devices exposed according to some scanners like census lists about 2000. Of course, not known how many of them are vulnerable or how many of them are honeypots or something else that just looks like a big IP device. If you are using big IP, definitely patch and absolutely make sure that you control access to the management interface. And talking about things that you should not expose to the Internet, uh, QNAP has an update for its video recorder software. So if you're using your QNAP device as a network video recorder, then please apply the update and yep, uh, make sure it's not exposed to the Internet. But even if you're totally disconnected from the Internet, you may still connect USB drives to your system. And Red Canary has an interesting blog post by Lauren Potber and Steph Rand talking about what they're calling Raspberry Robin, which is a group of attacks that they identified as originating from infected USB drives. Now, once the USB drive is attached, a malicious link file is used to run the actual malware and yep, uh, then it still needs the internet connection in order to download additional commands and connect to a command and control channel. Red Canary really does a good job here in identifying some detection opportunities in order to detect this kind of uh, behavior. The malware uses the legitimate utility MSI exec.exe in order to download additional files. It also establishes command and control activity over Tor. And we've got an interesting vulnerability in uh, Ruby gems. Now, Ruby gems are essentially libraries, packages for Ruby. And this vulnerability would have allowed you to replace gems with a malicious one. Greg Molnar has a great blog post uh, with the details about it, but essentially the way this works is that you would have to first publish a gem of your own. And that name you have to select so it's a substring of the name of the gem that you are replacing. The trick here is that when you're replacing a gem, you provide the gem's name and it's verified that you are the owner of the gem and a version of the gem which is attached to the name of the gem. So the version that you are then providing is essentially the remainder of the name of the gem that you are trying to replace. 
As this uh, version can be any string, doesn't have to be a number, just has to be separated by a dash, but many gem names contain dashes and that can then be exploited. The vulnerability has been addressed and you may want to check whatever gems you have, uh, whether or not they are legitimate. But as far as I can tell, nobody reported any exploitation of this vulnerability. And finally, we got a neat little uh, diary by Jan on Friday about what's the possible smallest malware for Windows. And he came up with a five character bat file that implements a fork bomb for Windows, essentially a denial of service attack and well, challenges anybody to come up with a smaller version of this. That's it for today. Keep disconnecting your admin interfaces from the internet and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.